Okay, we just saw that it was a bit of a problem uh, to find the effective impedance that the gate to drain capacitance uh, sees uh, in a common source amplifier. And we could imagine that we would have the same problem if we were trying to find the uh, impedance that C mu sees in a common emitter amplifier. Now, uh, in the case that we have an inverting amplifier, and remember uh, that both of the common source and common emitter uh, amplifiers are inverting. And this is that the output has a 180 degree phase shift from the input or we have a negative gain. Uh, we can uh, find a simplified solution for these. So here I've drawn uh, a simple amplifier where I have uh, an inverting amplifier that has a gain of minus A and I've drawn a capacitor going from the output to the input. What we're going to do is find CN, which is the capacitance looking in uh, from the input terminal. Okay, in order to do this, uh, we're just going to replace uh, uh, the input with a test voltage source. measure the current IX that would flow from this source. Okay, one thing we know is that the output voltage, uh, if this amplifier is working well, is going to be minus A times VX, which is the test voltage that we're putting into the amplifier. So what we can do now is find uh, what the uh, current flowing uh, is. Now, if it's an ideal voltage amplifier, no current flows into the amplifier. All the current is going to flow through the capacitor. So uh, what we can write is that Ix is equal to Vx minus V out divided by Zc, the impedance of the capacitor. And with a little bit of manipulation, we can show that this is Ix is equal to Sc times one plus A times Vx. Now what we're looking for is the effective impedance or effective capacitance that we see looking in. So we're going to take the ratio of Vx over Ix, the impedance looking into the uh, port, and we'll see that it's equal to 1 divided by 1 plus A times Sc. In other words, the effective capacitance C looks 1 plus A times bigger. So, we can make an equivalent circuit where we split the capacitor off from the output and make it 1 plus A times bigger than the original capacitance. And this will ease our analysis quite a bit. Now let's go to the output and see what the uh, capacitance looks like from the perspective of the output. So here, we have the same idea. We're going to put a test voltage source and measure the current flowing from it at the output this time. Now we know that the input has to be equal to minus Vx divided by A. We're just dividing by the gain of the amplifier to go back to the input. Now we can write Ix is equal to Vx minus Vi divided by Zc. And this is equal to Sc times Vx times 1 plus 1 over A. Solving for Vx over Ix we see that this is equal to 1 over 1 plus 1 over A times SC. So here we see that SC, that this capacitance, the effective impedance is 1 plus 1 over A times bigger.
Okay, so now we have an equivalent circuit with capacitance at the input and output. This is what we can do every time that we see a Miller capacitance, a capacitor that goes around an inverting gain stage. We replace the input capacitance with a capacitance that's equal to one plus A times bigger than C. We replace the output capacitance with a capacitance that's equal to one plus one over A times bigger than C. Now, this only works if the amplifier's gain is inverting. Okay, uh, now a couple of other notes. Uh, this isn't the complete story. Uh, what this will do is lead to a pole in uh, the response, in the frequency response, uh, but uh, when we have a feed forward path, a zero al also exists. And we'll look at the zeros uh, later on in the class, but just know that this is not the complete response. And uh, the other thing that we can do is approximate this. Remember, A is usually large. And if that's the case, then we can approximate this as approximately being equal to C, right? Okay, so we will do some exercises in class uh, where we uh, try and use the Miller technique to simplify uh, doing open circuit time constant analysis, uh, and uh, we'll do that uh, during the lecture.